Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. I promise you there is a watch review video in here somewhere today, but first I want to share the joys and the despairs of owning the Vostok Zizou. If you don't know what a Vostok Zizou is or why I'm wearing this silly red hat, then allow me to briefly recap. The Life Aquatique with Steve Zizou is a 2004 film directed by Wes Anderson, best described as a quirky left field comedy. It stars Bill Murray in the title role, playing Steve Zizou, again best described as a budget Jack Cousteau, a kind of discount ocean explorer. And in an inspired piece of watch casting, rather than giving Zizou a Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms like Cousteau wore, they made him wear a Vostok Amphibia, 420526 to be precise. Now I had been aware of the film and the watch in the film for some time and had the Zizou on my back burner list. In 2018 the Brazilian singer and guitarist who stars in the movie appeared at Sydney Opera House and they gave all of the staff these red hats as worn by all of the characters in the film. All the patrons turned up wearing in red hats as did the singer himself and the watch moved closer to the top of my prospective shopping list. Late last year, I discovered that Meronom not only had the Zizou in stock, but they now sold a Zizou case back with Bill Murray's face as Steve Zizou emblazoned all over the back. That was too much for me to resist. I hardly need an excuse to buy another Vostok as it is, so I ordered one. It arrived last December and I unboxed it in a triple unboxing video. And my joy was unbridled when I peeled off the stickers. Let's relive that moment together. Hang on a second. Where's my case back? Is it on the watch? Oh, it's on the watch. Look at that. <laughs> that is virtually priceless. It is hard to put a price on that. Hang on, I'll zoom in. I mean, as I said, I'm not like a massive fan of the movie, but that still thrills me beyond belief. That still thrills me beyond where a $10 case back for a Vostok Amphibia probably should. That is just epic. As I said, unbridled joy, I probably got my $10 worth by that point, which is just as well because things start to go awry from there. Now, I live in Australia, as you may well know, and the Australian national cancer is skin cancer. I love the country, but not so much that I want to get skin cancer. So when I'm out riding my bike, I daub myself with lots of Factor 30. Now, this little 420 Vostok is under 100 grams and comes supplied on a rubber strap. So one day I decided to wear it out on my bike. and this this is what the case bank looks like now after only a handful of days on my wrist. Despair indeed, I swear even Bill Murray looks upset by the way things have gone. But I don't know if it was me, I've left the case back dirty, you can see a kind of brownish hue, that's the sunscreen, I'm going to clean it up when I flip the camera. But I'd love to hear from you, did any of you buy one of those Bill Murray Steve Zizou case backs and if you did, how's it looking now? I don't think sunscreen is a particularly caustic material. I wouldn't have expected it to take the paint off the case back as is. It looks like it was printed on and not particularly well printed on, so my joy was short lived. Can I recommend the case back to you? Well, perhaps if you're just going to put the watch in a box and admire it occasionally, not if you're actually going to wear the thing. I can recommend the watch though. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. Perhaps you can tell but I like Vostoks. If you don't already own one of these remarkable Russian timepieces, I highly recommend having a look at Mernom.com. There are plenty on eBay and Amazon as well. Picking one you like and buying it. Less than $100 each, all of these watches on the table. This one is a modified 420 case, that's Mazizu. This is a 24 hour that was in the queue for review. I've got an Amphibia and I have got a Komandersky GMT. These do dip in and out of stock though, so do be aware of that, especially these more popular models. Now, I particularly like these little 420 cases. I think they're a really neat watch on wrist. If you like a slightly smaller watch or you have slightly smaller than average wrists, then I would direct you towards the 420 as your first amphibia. They measure it at 39. I actually measure it at 40 mil. Got a bit of a chunk to it though. It's a little bubble, 14.7 mil thick, but a super compact 45.5 lug to lug. So small wrist, no problem. As I said, 18 millimeter lug width, perhaps that's two mil smaller than I would have preferred. But on this supplied Vostok rubber strap, there is a bit of a flare there to give the illusion of a slightly larger lug width than the 18 suggests. Now I said it was light, 77 grams on this supplied rubber strap. One thing perhaps you noticed about all of my amphibias and my common is none of them are on 
recommend the supplied Vostok bracelets because the supplied Vostok bracelets are awful. I would recommend optioning on a rubber or optioning on one of the excellent mesh straps. When I got this one, I did both of those things. So it's a stainless steel watch, stainless steel case, crown and stainless steel bezel. Some of the older ones were chrome brass, but these new ones are all stainless steel. And as you saw, Zizou there is also a stainless steel case back. That is a lovely piece of bubbled acrylic. These go back to the 1960s and acrylic was the go back then. It's a dive watch, obviously, so we have a screw down crown with 200 meters of water resistance. Now the movement in this is a Vostok in-house 2416, a 31 joule movement. Now it does not hack, but it does hand wind. When you pull this crown out to the first position, you can wind it that way. Bit of a wobble. There's a few idiosyncrasies that you have to get used to with these Vostoks. The crown stem doesn't fully engage with the movement until you pull it out to the second position, the time adjust position. At this point, you can also back hack the movement with a little backward pressure there. You can see I've managed to stop the second hand. Like I said, there's a few quirks that you can take advantage of, including a quick set date function that they don't talk about. Look at that. The date popped over bang on midnight, which is really nice to see. You don't get that with a Seiko. Roll it over to 2, 2.30, roll it back to about 9 then roll it forward to midnight and hopefully there we are it flicks over again so you can kind of back hack the movement and you can also quick set the date dial and hands this is the 526 model so we have the ship's wheel at 12 and the anchor at 6 as well as arabics at the 2 the 4 the 8 and the 10 there are dozens and dozens of different dials to choose from though and it's the same dials they use across the various case shapes and the same dials they use across the Amphibia and the Commandierski. So if you don't want a dive watch, if you want a 30 meter field watch instead, then perhaps you can go for one of the slightly cheaper Commandierskis. They're not autos though, they are manual wound. This one sits somewhere in the middle of the spectrum of Soviet era gaudiness. There are some with eagles and tanks and submarines and all kinds of Soviet era memorabilia. This one, not too bad actually. Very simple handset, red lollipop second hand, arrowhead hour hand and a fairly straight forward sword minute hand and there is a bit of loom here as well not bad considering the price $75 I don't normally expect much from a watch under a hundred the looms okay on these certainly better than a Casio Duro for example and that's the case back again Cleaner this time, but still pretty disappointing. Steve looks depressed, I'm convinced of it. Interesting design though, two-piece case back, you, meaning you can take these on and off as many times as you like without fear of damaging the rubber seal. So quirky, yes, but certainly innovative and a remarkable piece of engineering given the limited equipment these were made on at the time during the 60s. Now, considering Vostok quote minus 20 seconds to plus 60 seconds per day as an acceptable variance for the movement, I'm delighted with this one coming in at plus six, plus seven with a reasonable amplitude, zero beat error, and that slightly unusual beat rate of 19,800 vibrations per hour. 10 year service interval, the slow beat rate helps push that right out to 10 years. You get a 10 year service interval on a seven and a half thousand dollar Rolex or a $75 Vostok. And yeah, it's a really neat little watch, this one on wrist, like I said. Relatively compact diameter, super short lug to lug, and a comfortable rubber strap means it actually gets away with that 14.7 mil thickness. No problem at all. And that's it on the excellent Vostok branded mesh strap. Seriously, these straps are as good as stuff that I've paid two and three times the price for. So definitely an option box worth ticking, in my opinion. And that's it back on the rubber strap for the overhead shot. Relatively smaller profile of this 420 case, but still a reasonably legible dial and handset, I think. Outside natural light, you get a lovely bit of vintage style distortion from that acrylic crystal. These watches actually get more waterproof the more pressure is put on them. They are incredible. They're rated at 200 meters, but some of them go much, much beyond that. I'll leave a link to one being torture tested to destruction in the description of the video. I'll also leave a link to the Russian factory where they're made. I've used the word agricultural to describe these watches before. I don't think that quite captures the essence of some of that machinery. It was great to see them hand painting the loom pips onto the dials though quite remarkable that you can get all of this most of it handmade for $75 so quirky fun and value packed but I am going to complain about a few things now the bezel the bezel is normally bi-direction and friction based and therefore pretty useless what I've done with this one though is I fixed it you can pop these off there's a spring clip underneath you just tighten up the spring clip a bit pop it back on and you can actually fix them I tend to do that with most of my Vostoks because I don't find this bi-directional bezel all that useful at all and I did mention a spectrum of Soviet era gaudiness the looks even on 
on these slightly milder ones are not going to be to everyone's taste. I appreciate that. But if you're a fan of the movie or you're a fan of Bill Murray or you're a fan of value-packed dive watches, I can't recommend these Amphibia enough. So there you have it, the Vostok 420526, aka the Zizu, definitely one of my favourite watches under 100 US dollars, regardless of the disappointing case back, I just love these Vostok Amphibia. If you haven't already picked yourself one up, you probably should do. If you don't like this size, the 420 is a nice small neat case for people with smaller wrists or who prefer smaller watches. If it's too small for you, particularly with 18mm lug width, there are plenty out there with 20s and 22s. The case back, oh, what a disappointment. I had some fun with it, but I wish I'd had more fun with it, put it that way. Thanks for watching, I will see you in a future video.